Hey, hello. I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody's fine despite all the crap going on on this planet. But let's talk about something nice. Let's talk about trees. I love trees. Perennials with an elongated stem, wooden stem, trunk. So what about trees in a CFD analysis? This is really something very special. Why? Because if you look at any of um, most uh, commercial CFD analysis software packages, you, you realize they are made predominantly for the certain industries, automotive, aviation, engineering, architecture. None of them has, have trees. Well, that's actually not totally true. Uh, Rhino CFD, I think, has a component, has a, a, a component where you can define a mass as a tree. Let's say one or more trees, you, you just define a block, an area where basically apply um, almost like a filter. So wind going through that block will be affected somehow. And there is Eddy 3D. Great. I, I love it because see that that's actually very important in urban design In urban design trees actually or trees or plants in general have a huge impact on the outer comfort and not just the sunlight it's also uh, the wind and how they mitigate it and that's what we talk about today i will i will uh, explain a bit on how i set this up uh, with edit 3d is very easy actually because it already gives you um, a a predefined um, script so you just open edit 3 d and then you just it gives you the opportunity to just open a script already an a ready-made uh, analysis tool and uh, I will show you a bit the pitfalls because it's not that straightforward sometimes uh, but also I want to talk about this so I have seen quite a lot of people doing this they they import a, a real like a model of a tree that's a way to do it i will just explain you why i would not do it like this um another one is that's what i mo i modeled it like a simple uh, tree with like a massing where i try to imitate a certain look of a tree or so trying to match a certain shape of a tree this was the one which was originally in the script uh from like an eddy 3d pre-made model it's also just a model of a tree very simple and then i also placed a solid uh just as just to compare where so this is where there's no tree no no air going through it's like a, a solid object also in the shape of a crown but yeah just very simplified yeah as you can see there are quite differences but before we go further into this let's talk about what we want to get out of it. I think there are two approaches. One is what does the what what is the effect of a plant on its surrounding in terms of uh, CFD analysis and outdoor comfort. And the other one is how is wind affecting a tree. That's a co completely different story. I can explain it a bit. For example, you have for example you have something like this, a Bosco verticale from Stefano Boyeri. In that case, you you maybe not need to. I mean, for sure, there was a lot of uh, uh, analysis going on on this project, and I I would assume that one of the main aspects of uh, CFD analysis or wind analysis in that case is how does the wind affect the tree on the building? You know, does it what, what wind speed does it need to to get ripped out of the uh, pot and or when does it break? When does the wind break? And I think that's a very difficult uh, analysis in the computer. And you probably better served if you um, do a wind tunnel test, like a real, phys like a real physical wind tunnel. There you can test how far, how far you can go. What what is the strength of uh, of the wind until the tree breaks? So just checking this video here. I, I'll put this video into the save watch later so here for example that's actually the bosco verticale wind tunnel in the miami so they're really testing a tree a live tree they're really testing a tree inside it's 
so crazy. I think it's it's pretty impressive. Um, but yeah, you see, and what you also see here, what you also see here, and which I think is very important to uh, better understand it, is look at how flexible these branches are, and especially the um, the leaves. The leaves basically move towards the wind direction, move in line or parallel to the wind direction. Whereas, for example, in a model like this, where in a model like this, it's not it's not moving with the wind. It's uh, it's a very very rigid um, object. It's a very rigid object. So the the, the branches are not flexible, and the, and the leaves are not flat flexible either. So that's why I would not suggest to do this. So I would not suggest to do this because it's not in any way simulating the real situation. Aside from that, it's it can be very heavy on your uh, analysis and maybe take even much longer than if you have a simple kind of um, a, a more simple simplified model. Then we have this one, the solid one. Yeah, I mean, it's just here for comparison, but you can see that it just doesn't allow any wind going through. And also afterwards, it's actually not really uh, slowing down, uh, slowing down the 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 wind you know the, the air just flows around very quickly this one so this one i think it makes very much sense because you can see that wind goes into that object and comes out slower so that i think it's much more uh, realistic in terms of what what the the wind does or what and how the tree mitigates the wind and it's this is an object in eddy 3 d and we'll show it right away in the script where you basically in the simulation domain, you define trees. And I don't know how it works uh, from, I don't know how the script works. I haven't looked at the script, but I can imagine that it's basically an object which allows, which has like a certain factor of how it interacts or deals with this, with the wind, deals with the wind. Um, yeah, I will, I will go to that very quickly. And what I did, I, did something similar i just thought is there a way to um, have something like this which is very simple but still like a has a bit more of a, like a tree shape and it's not that regular because it could be also uh, be that your tree looks like this it would have a different effect if it's like a elongated uh, kind of shape anyway funny thing is that actually it it kind of has an effect. Of course, it's it tries to simulate something. How accurate this version is here, I'm not sure. It is actually very similar to this one. It's very similar to this one. But I believe that trying to match a shape more or less like a tree is probably the better the better solution. Okay, having said that, let's have a look at the script. So basically, if I start from scratch, I will just uh, create a new file here, new document. And uh, you get, if you never worked with Eddie 3D, please check out the previous videos uh, where I explain how to install and how to run it. And now we can just jump in here, um, open this template uh, tool, right click, Eddie 3D, simple wind analysis simple wind analysis with tree that's the one and again it has already like some stuff in there which we just get rid of so i just delete this i don't need all this here um you can see it has this tree here it has another tree here we can use that for the simulation um to define a building if you want to have a building in here we should have something because uh, the building will define also the size of the domain. So that's important. So let's say we have two buildings here. What we need is we need a geometry container, geometry. Oh, it's just, can, we can place this here. So now they are linked into that container. Then we can use um, a tool that's called mesh because we need to mesh it in order to, for, the, for it to work. And we also need to join the mesh actually i think it's only for this object here so this is the pro points uh calling kind of uh, tool where basically all the pro points inside these objects are omitted that's pretty cool so 
I'll talk about this later. I'll talk about the pro points later. Let's finish this here first. So this is my geometry. I place it here if I want. Geometry in. And now it created this domain. And you can see if I move this, then the domain will grow with it. And the wind direction is defined here with the zero. If I change that, then the wind direction also changes. So for example, 12. And it's in degree, I think. Then it moves 12 degrees with the, with the clock. Go back here. Um, and then here I have my trees. If I want to add trees, I can do it here. I can copy this. And now this has this tree. This is this tree. And I can add another tree here. Now also the mesh and simulation. Uh, what I did is I, one good thing is always to clean everything, clean the result uh, because um, sometimes it doesn't work. So I, I always clean it and then run my simulation. Uh, sometimes it gives you an error, but um, then I just clean it or restart. Uh, sometimes it's necessary. It's a very delicate CFD analysis in general. And then you would run a test with the settings which are already there. Now, if I basically you can uh, control the accuracy here and uh, for my test in the other, I use four. So it's a bit more accurate than the previous one. And the number slider I put two, that means more pro points. But it also gave me an error and said, probably more than 5,000 points may slow things down considerably. Well, it was still okay because it's not very, it's not a very difficult model. Yeah, the probing points, uh, the probing points, the probing points, as we learned in uh, Butterfly CFD, is that, and it's very similar. So I guess you can imagine that some of the code is even the same. Yeah, these probing points are basically just points distributed on a plane or in any other way you can actually also create um, so you could create a box let's do that so just first just for you to understand better here let's not preview this i will hide that box so now if i preview you can see there's a plane this is the plane it's actually a bit it's, it's quite big I, I wouldn't need that big so i made it actually smaller I, and i replaced it because i just i just made a um a plane like this. And then replaced it with this one. So now this is my new plane. I can hide that as well. And this one is just a vertical plane. It's the one we saw before. It's the, it's the one where we saw already the, the values from the first calculation. If I preview that you can actually preview this so you see all the points distributed on this plane it's basically just a grid you know there's nothing more than this if i do this then you see that it already defines all the pro points and you can also do that in 3d space i could do this and now that doesn't work because it's basically just creates a box with the points distributed on the outside but i could use for example i could use for example this one and increase that to 2000 then i have a completely different so that's that's a way to do it so instead of instead of using these flat ones instead of using something flat i can actually use prop points like this they don't have to be in a plane they can be in any they can be anywhere within the domain so we could do this and then we put this here And another thing very, very important is um, here you can set the density. So for example, dense, I would, I would say like a, a duya. By the way, I don't like this type of tree. I like it more natural, but I would call this very dense. That's, that would be very dense, it's a very dense tree. And a medium tree is maybe something like uh, Acer. No, not Acer, not, not the 
not a computer. That would be like a medium or between medium and, and low. I think here is uh, coarse, medium or dense. Of course, you can much can go much more in detail if you actually look if you look here, tree type. Either pass tree type as coarse, medium, or dense, or pass a multi a multi line string that refers to the D and F coefficients of the Darcy Forkheimer model. Now I'm guilty. I don't know. I don't know the the Darcy Forkheimer model. Of course, that would be something to really like look into more in detail. What and how that works. Uh, found one website where it's actually there's a calculator, which is pretty cool. Um, but again, this is goes very much into detail. Uh, actually, here also an open form wiki. There is another one which explains uh, how CFD kind of works with a porous object, and there is a See, estimate the Darcy Forkheimer coefficient to model porous media in your simulation. Pretty cool. And Holtzman CFD, I don't know, I've never heard this is a company. They do a CFD analysis and it seems like they're also working with open form. So here you have it. Um, yeah, I will stick with dense, medium, and coarse for now. It's never as good as a real physical test but i mean that you could tr actually try that no you could then test the wind speeds after uh, behind the tree for, in real life and then compare it with your model in in this other script i i also did something here i set all the dense so then i can compare them better or i can compare the different models and the outcome are more bet better because if for example if this is set to medium and the others to dense, then I would not know really what the outcome, if, if that is better than this model. Just to keep in mind. So here I didn't change it, I'll keep it. This is dense, this is medium, and this is medium as well. So dense, medium, medium. And the others I just remove for now, play with it alone, at home, alone at home. And uh, yeah, I clean this here. And let's see if it works. Okay. So we created a mesh, hexy mesh, uh, snappy hex mesh, as you can remember. Yeah, that looks good. If 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 you can see this, that means the calculation works. If it would stop after a few uh, lines of code, then it's gone. Then it doesn't work. But yeah, that looks very good. Okay run this that also seems working there's no problem here um, and then we can basically run our we can visualize the props let's realize this yes i'm not sure about that also turn this off turn this off what well, kind of Actually, yeah, it works. You can see that uh, the high winds are more on the top. Actually, we could we could add a, a clipping plane. That could work. Let's add a clipping plane. So we can look at smaller portions. Yeah, I think we need more. Um, we need more pro points, definitely. So let's crank it up. Uh, we go here number let's check 6000 good thing is that the calculation is already done not sure if this has any does it actually change anything at all um i will i will uh go up a bit here because i think it makes it more accurate uh and here i will also go even higher let's go for 10000 need to i need to clean it Let's clean it. It's much slower now. But I think it will help the calculation. Okay, see you see you on the other side. I think it's just waiting until my light's going off here. 
finish. It's not that crazy long. And um, yeah. So this run, this one, we ran a simulation. We increased the accuracy. And we also increased the point count to 6,000. No, 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 we need more. We need. Uh, let's see, let's see, 6,000, okay. Interestingly, I'm not sure what's what happened here. Um, let's let, let's check the. As I said, it's sometimes it's quite a delicate thing. Let's see here what's going on. Here you can actually see it nice. It has quite an effect on surrounding. I don't know, I really don't know why. Yeah, that's the difference of dense and non-dense, not dense. So dense means, okay, it has a strong effect on the wind speed. And here it's actually not as strong. You know what I do here? Another thing you can do if this just doesn't look very, don't have enough overview and also uh, make these lines, these arrows short, and it, it's, it's actually just very simple. Here you have the here and here, you have uh, the vectors, and you just add a division slider here, a number ten, and you go here, and you feed that into the vector. Because at the moment, look, like, it's it's actually just this the vector, the length of the vector goes in in here, and you can also do change that, so then you have a better overview. But yeah, you can see that there is here it has quite an effect, and here very little. Hey, let's check it out if it worked. Run this here. It gives me an error. Why? What? Hopefully it works now. Yeah, it seems like it works. I don't know why it didn't work before, but yeah, I told you sometimes it makes this weird things. Let's see. I mean, it doesn't really. Okay, let's see if it worked. Hopefully it worked now. Um, sounds good so far. I used the the plane again just for just to test now because it seemed like it didn't work before. I don't know why. Let's see. I think there's something wrong. Um, I will. Creating my trees. Yeah, here it works. Why? Why? That's very strange. So it works here. And I just want to I just want to show you that I'm not making this up. Um,
yeah now you can see that there's you know they have this blue kind of arrows here after the tree that means yeah it works but just showing you that you can also distribute your uh, pro points that way you don't have to doesn't have to be flat why it didn't work why it didn't took the other trees in, into account i'm not sure uh, maybe because i'm running the same script uh, in parallel maybe that has a reason um if i find out i will tell you but yeah it, it works so yeah i hope um that makes some sort of sense uh sorry for uh, the trial and error but it just shows you that this is not just uh that, that this whole thing is very delicate this whole analysis and it, it takes a lot of trial and error anyway i mean i have to always try my things before i show it to you and um yeah that's that's how it is there's no other way okay my lights is off i guess that means see you next time